Jay and today I'm here with my top 17 books of 2017. Little disclaimer, these are books that I personally read in 2017 so they aren't necessarily released in 2017. So without further ado, let us get started. Coming in at number 17 is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. I put off reading this book for so long. It's one of my mom's favorite books and she's been pushing me to read it since like a million trillion years ago so I finally picked it up this year and it was so good it's so like whimsical and not what I expected at all I definitely recommend going into it blind so I'm not gonna give a synopsis but it's different from anything I've read before and I highly recommend it because it was hecka good coming in at number 16 is The Outliers by Kimberly McCrite Kimberly McCrite is one of my favorite adult novel writers and this is her YA book this book follows a girl named Wiley who receives a text message from her best friend Casey saying that she needs her help then Casey's boyfriend Jackson shows up at Wiley's doorstep and says that he also received a text message saying that she needed help so they set off on this adventure to go find Casey. A lot of people have complained that it's like super far-fetched and it would never happen in real life and blah 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 but personally I thought that that's what made the story more entertaining. I like books that are like thrilling and exciting and this book definitely was thrilling and exciting to me. It had me on the edge of my seat the entire time. Coming in at number 15 is We Are the Ants by Sean David Hutchinson. It's advertised as a contemporary novel about a boy named Henry Denton who is kidnapped or taken by aliens and they're giving him the option to press a red button to stop the end of the world. And it's basically the story of Henry deciding whether or not to push this red button. It is so good. It just has you so confused half the time. By the end of it you're just like what did I just read? I honestly don't know how to explain it without giving the book the justice that it deserves. So all I'm gonna say is that you should definitely read it because it is not what you expect. It is so much better. Coming in at number 14 is Little and Lion by Brandy Colbert. The book follows Suzette who is at a boarding school in New England. She ends up coming back to LA to be with her family and her brother was just diagnosed with bipolar disorder. So once Suzette is back she has to come to terms with her brother's diagnosis as well as falling in love with the girl who he is in love with, as well as having a crush on a boy named Emil. It's kind of a story of finding your own identity and I just really, really liked it. A lot of people who I've talked to about it say that the bisexual representation is very well done. I just really enjoyed it. I thought it was really well done. I think that all the characters were very well developed. I loved every second of the story and I think that a lot of people are going to be able to connect the main character and other characters in the story so I highly recommend it if you haven't read it already. Coming in at number 13 is a Friend Request by Laura Marshall. The book follows two timelines. One is in 1989 where Louise becomes friends with a girl named Maria Weston and then something tragic happens and Maria Weston and ends up dead. It also follows Louise in 2016 where she receives a friend request from Maria Weston. The only thing is Maria is supposed to be dead so she is very confused. She ends up accepting the friend request and then she receives a message from this person pretending to be Maria saying that she knows what happened the night of Maria's death. So in order to try to cover up what actually happened, Louise goes on this wild goose chase trying to figure out who this person is and what they actually know. If you've been on my channel for a while you know thrillers are my favorite genre. I love them so much, especially if I can't call the ending. If I can't call the ending of a book, it pretty much becomes one of my favorite books, which is what happened with this one. I did not see the ending coming at all, so if you're into like huge plot twists that like you have no idea it's gonna happen, this might be the book for you. Coming in at number 12 is The Good Daughter by Karen Slaughter, or Slaughter, still don't know how to pronounce that. But I would honestly say that you should go into this book blind, so again, I'm not gonna give a synopsis just because like it was so much better without one. But the book is definitely thrilling, keeps you on the edge of your seat the entire time. As I said about the last book, I love thrillers. I love when I can't call the ending, could not call the ending to this book. So again, one that I would highly recommend. I would definitely go into the book with caution though because it is very, very graphic, very very gory. There's a lot of trigger warnings, especially for rape. Coming in at number 11 is Girls Made of Snow and Glass by Melissa Bashardos. This is like a feminist retelling of Snow White and the Evil Queen with a female-female relationship. I thought it was so good. I love fairy tale retellings and I think that this one was such a unique take on the original story. Highly recommend it if you haven't picked it up already. Now coming in on my top 10 books for this year. Number 10 is The Female of the Species by Mindy McGinnon. Honestly, the 
top 10 that I have here are pretty much ones that you all told me I needed to read and that I would love and I was like I'll get to it eventually and like why I waited so long I don't know. This one follows a girl named Alex Craft whose sister was raped and murdered and the man who did it never got justice so Alex takes it into her own hands to bring that justice and ends up killing the man. The book also follows PK who is the preacher's daughter who befriends Alex while they're working at an animal shelter together as well as Jack who is the star football player who ends up getting to know Alex a little more than he bargained for. I did not expect to like this book as much as I did. It's kind of like a female Dexter and I personally loved Dexter. I was here for it and I was definitely here for the book. Highly recommend it. I have a full review if you want to hear like my full thoughts on it so you can check that out. Coming in at number nine is The Raven Boys by Maggie Stiefvater. I'm not going to give a full synopsis of this one either just because I think you should go into it blind. It's way better. It is not what you expect. It has animus twists that I didn't even realize was going to be part of the story at all. I have a full review of this one as well if you're interested in checking it out but highly recommend it if you haven't read it already but you probably have because everybody's read this. Next coming in at number eight is The Diviners by Libba Bray. I freaking love this book. I listened to it on audiobook. Personally I think that that made the experience so much better. The person who does the audio version of it is so talented and the atmosphere was just so well done. Again I have a full review of it if you're interested in hearing my full thoughts. Definitely check out the audiobook because it is so good. Coming in at number seven is It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. I know that Colleen Hoover's books are very controversial and a lot of people don't like them because of the content that is inside of them, but personally I loved this book. It follows an abusive relationship and I just think that it was really, really well done. I have a full review of this one as well if you want to check out my full thoughts. I would definitely recommend it. I thought it was really, really good. Coming in at number six is Radio by Sophia Elaine Hansen. If you have been following this channel for a while, you know my favorite book is Vinyl by Sophia Lane Hansen. This is the sequel, the uh, trilogy's finale, Siren, is coming out in 2018 and I am beyond excited about it. Obviously I'm not going to give a synopsis of this because it is the second in a series. Check out Vinyl, it is so good. It's basically a dystopian that uses music as a weapon and it's just so different from anything I've ever read and I highly, highly recommend it. So please, 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 please go look at it. I will leave a link down below to like the Amazon for it. You guys should definitely check it out. Coming in at number five is The Art of Starving by Sam J. Miller. This book follows a boy who suffers from anorexia. It also has a kind of like supernatural sci-fi, not really sci-fi, but it's definitely not what you expect going into it. It, it was took a completely different turn than what I thought was going to go on with it. I read it in one sitting because I was just so invested in the story and I really wanted to know what happened to Matt next. I was not expecting to like this book as much as I did, but I'm so glad I picked it up. Coming in at number four is I Hunt Killers by Barry Liga. I freaking love this book. I have a full review of it if you're interested in hearing my full thoughts. It follows a boy named Jazz whose father is a notorious serial killer and everybody is worried that he's going to end up just like his daddy and then Jazz begins to get these urges about killing other people and he begins to believe that he may be like his dad as well and it's basically this super funny book that you do not expect to be funny but I was honestly sitting there laughing half the time. I thought it was so good and I just got the next two books in the series so I'm very excited to pick them up and see if I like the rest of it. I definitely recommend it if you're into like more light-hearted thriller books that aren't like super gory or scary. It's definitely a good start to get you into the thriller genre if you're not into like super heavy-duty thrillers. Coming in at number three is The Couple Next Door by Sherry LaPena. I found it at my local thrift store and I had seen the cover before and I hadn't really heard that much about it so I was kind of going into it blind. It follows a couple that leaves their baby baby at home to go to their neighbor's house to go to a dinner party and they think that it's fine because they're, they're right next door. You can check on the baby every half an hour. Everything will be fine. They return home from this dinner party and the baby is missing. It's basically the story of them trying to figure out where their baby is and how to get her back and it's just not what you expect. I did not see the ending coming and again, if I can't see the ending coming, I love the book so I was 100% invested in this story. I read it in one sitting because I needed
needed to know what was gonna happen. This is another great one if you're not into super scary thrillers. Coming in at number two is Never Let You Go by Chevy Stevens. The book follows Lindsay Nash who escaped an abusive relationship 11 years ago with her young daughter and now her husband is being released from jail and she's very scared because she doesn't want him finding her. Her husband's up being broken into and her new boyfriend is feeling very threatened. Lindsay believes that, that it is actually Andrew who is causing all these problems. Andrew swears that he's changed and he wants a relationship with his daughter but Lindsay doesn't quite trust him and it's basically the story of trying to navigate all that jazz. I think that this was so well done. Again, I love things that I can't call the endings to. Definitely did not call the ending to this one. I have a full review if you want to hear my full thoughts on it, but I would definitely recommend it for, again, people who don't like super gory thrillers. This was not gory at all. It was just very suspenseful. And then finally, coming in at number one for me this year is Dangerous Girls by Abigail Hawes. I have a full review of this as well up on my channel if you want to check it out. This is like a YA thriller and it is so dang good. I did not expect to like it as much as I did. Again, this is a very light hearted thriller so if you're not into the gore and all that jazz definitely try this out it's a very good one to ease on into the thriller genre it follows a girl named Anna who decides to go on spring break with a bunch of her friends her best friend ends up dead and everybody turns to Anna believing that she is actually the one who committed the crime and it's basically the trial and trying to figure out if Anna was actually the one who committed the murder or not so freaking good I've praised this book on my channel so many times and I just just highly recommend it. Alright guys, so that was my top 17 of 2017. Let me know down below if you've read any of these and what you thought of them and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!